Hi there, and welcome to another science and chemistry video. My name is Jeremy Krug, and in this video, we're going to be learning about how to make unit conversions using a method called dimensional analysis. If you like what you see and learn something from this video, if you would please do me a big favor and hit that like button, I really appreciate it. That does help the algorithm. And if you really like what you see, then consider subscribing. This is the place for honors chemistry and for AP chemistry. Now, whenever we talk about converting from one unit to another, it's important to realize that anytime you take a number, any number, and multiply it by one, as you can see here, it always equals itself. Anything times one equals itself. Now, what about fractions? When we talk about the number one, any value over its equivalent is also equal to one, isn't it? So for example, 12 inches over one foot has a value of one. Well, in dimensional analysis, what we're doing is we're multiplying by one. We're not changing the value of what we have. Also, whenever we write our conversion factors, we always want to write a conversion factor that's equivalent to 1, so that the numerator is equivalent to the value of the denominator. Now let's take a look at a simple example of this. Take a look at this problem and see if you can answer it very quickly. Did you get the answer? Sometimes when students look at that problem, they'll automatically think the answer is 3. But then when you look closer, you realize, no, that's not the answer. You see, this is one of the reasons why we need to use dimensional analysis, so we don't accidentally divide when we're supposed to multiply, or accidentally multiply when we're supposed to divide. So the way that we do this is we start by taking the 36 feet, and we write that down. And since we're converting to inches, I'm going to write an equal sign and inches way down here at the end, so I know that that will be my final unit. And in my conversion factor, whatever unit I'm starting with needs to go on the opposite side of the fraction line. So in this case, since feet is in the numerator starting out, I need to put feet in the denominator of my conversion factor. And since I'm converting to inches, I need to put inches on the top. So inches over feet. Now, how many inches are equal to how many feet? Well, the conversion factor tells us it's 12 inches in one foot. So now I can cancel feet, top and bottom, just like this. And on my calculator, I can take 36 times 12. And we could divide by 1, but most people, of course, don't do that because that doesn't change the value. And you'll find that the answer, rounded to two significant figures, is about 430 inches. So that's how you'd solve a simple problem like this using dimensional analysis. Now, most people might not need to use dimensional analysis for something as simple as this, but this is how it works. Now, let's try this question. Convert 96.0 centimeters to inches. So once again, we take 96.0 centimeters, since that's given to us, and write that down. And since we're converting to inches, I put an equal sign and inches over here at the end. Now in my conversion factor, since I'm starting with centimeters, centimeters needs to go in the denominator of my conversion factor. That way it'll cancel out here at the end. And since I'm converting to inches, inches need to go on top. Now let's think to ourselves, how many inches are equivalent to how many centimeters? Well, the conversion factor says 1 inch equals 2.54 centimeters. So now we can cancel those centimeters top and bottom, just like we said earlier. And on our calculator, we can take 96.0. You don't have to multiply by 1, but you can if you want to. And then divide by 2.54. So 96.0 divided by 2.54 is about 37.8 inches. So this is how you can convert from one unit to another using dimensional analysis. Let's try one that's a little bit more complicated. Here we have some units that uh, may not be very familiar to us. Convert 482 giras to bikas. So we're going to start by writing down 482 giras. And since we're trying to convert to bikas, Way down here at the end, we'll have an equal sign and bikas. And as you can see, we don't have one conversion factor that converts directly from giras to bikas. But we do have giras to shekels. 
So let's convert to shekels first. So in my first conversion factor, gira needs to go on the bottom of that conversion factor. And since I'm converting to shekels in this first step anyway, shekels needs to go on top. And I can look at that first conversion factor and see that one shekel, so one next to shekel, equals 20 giras. So 20 next to giras. Now I can cancel giras top and bottom. And now if I were to stop right here, I'd be in shekels, wouldn't I? But I don't want to be in shekels. I want to be in bikas. So I have another step to do. In my next conversion factor, I'm going to put shekels on the bottom. And since I'm converting to bikas, bikas goes on top. And so according to the conversion factor, there are two bikas in one shekel. So now I can cancel shekels. And now in my calculation, I can take 482 divided by 20 times 2. So the rule is any number in the denominator, you divide by that. And you multiply by any number that's in the numerator. So when you do that on your calculator, the answer is about 48.2 bikas. So this is how you do a dimensional analysis problem with two steps. Now let's try one that's a bit more complex. Let's try this problem right here. Now this is a very typical everyday type of a problem that you might have to do at some point in your future. It says the distance from Denver to Las Vegas is 755 miles. Driving a car that gets 28.0 miles per gallon and paying $2.95 per gallon per gas, how much would it cost to buy the fuel for this trip? Once again, a very typical everyday problem that you may have to solve at some point. But once again, let's take 755 miles and write that down and the question is how much would it cost so we're trying to get an answer that's in dollars and so way down here at the end I'm gonna have an equal sign in dollars so what should we convert to first well miles we can convert from miles to gallons because we have a conversion factor here that says 28.0 miles per gallon so using that as a conversion factor, we can convert from miles to gallons. So in our first conversion factor, miles will go on the bottom, and I want to put gallons on the top. Now the conversion factor is 28.0 miles per one gallon, right? That's what miles per gallon means. So one gallon gets you 28.0 miles. So now I can cancel miles, and I'm in gallons. So what's the next conversion factor that I need to use here? Well, let's put gallons on the bottom. And since we're converting to dollars, let's put dollars on the top. And do we know how many dollars there are in how many gallons as far as the price goes? Well, yeah, it tells us in the question. It's $2.95 or $2.95 for every one gallon of gasoline. So now I can cancel gallons top and bottom. And on my calculator, I can take 755 divided by 28.0 times 2.95, and I get an answer of about $79.50. Uh, we probably ought to use two significant figures, but you know, since currency is in dollars and cents, you know, the hundreds place, we'll go ahead and do that. So that's $79.50. Now, you might want to have enough fuel to get back. Usually a round trip uh, would be you know, twice that amount. So to take the round trip, we should multiply that, that by two and have an answer of $159 to take the round trip in the fuel there. All right, let's try one more example, more about the price of gasoline. This one says, on a recent trip to Mexico, the price of gas was advertised as 24.19 pesos per liter. What is this price in US dollars per gallon? There are 3.785 liters in one gallon, and at the time of the trip, there were 19.85 pesos per U.S. dollar. Once again, we're going to start with what's given to us, the 24.19 pesos per liter. So I'll write that down. And in case you didn't know, that three-letter word per, P-E-R, that means divide by. Okay, so that's like saying 24.19 pesos over one liter. That's what the per means there, or equivalent to a liter. Now, we're trying to convert this to U.S. dollars per gallon. So way down here at the end, I'm going to have dollars 
per or divide by gallon. Now we're going to have to convert pesos to dollars and we're going to have to convert liters to gallons. It doesn't matter which one you do first. I'm just going to convert the pesos to dollars. So in my first conversion factor, pesos need to go on the bottom right here. And so dollars would go on to the top. That way pesos will, will cancel. Now, how many dollars are equivalent to how many pesos according to the problem? Well, it says right here, 19.85 pesos per one US dollar. So one dollar, 19.85 pesos. So I can cancel pesos top and bottom. Now, if I were to stop right here, I'd be in dollars per liter, wouldn't I? But I don't want to be in dollars per liter. I want to be in dollars per gallon. So I have one more conversion factor to do here. I'm going to put liters on the top this time because I have to have the, um, the unit on the opposite side of the conversion factor so it will cancel. So this time liters goes on top and gallons will go on the bottom because I want to have gallons in the denominator of my answer. Now how many liters are there in how many gallons? Well once again the problem tells us. It says there are 3.785 liters in one gallon. So I'll just write that in here. 3.785 liters for one gallon. And now I can cancel liters top and bottom just like that. And so on my calculator I can take 24.19 divided by 19.85 times 3.785. Remember we divide by numbers in the denominator, we multiply by numbers in the numerator. And when you do that, you find an answer of about $4.613 dollars per gallon. Or if you're rounding it off to dollars and cents, that's about $4.61 per gallon. I hope you learned something from this video. Hope you uh, were able to hone your skills on how to convert from one unit to another using this interesting method called dimensional analysis. If you learned something, like I said, please consider hitting that like button. I would really appreciate it. I hope to see you again in our next video where we can learn some more chemistry together.